In this second episode of our Hidden History series on the women of the Upper House, we return to Emily Penrose. The diary of 28-year-old Emily Penrose was recently donated to the British School of Athens Archive. This diary recounts the days between March and November 1887, when Emily lived here in Athens with her family. This was during a time when her father, Francis Penrose, was in post as the first director of the BSA. Today, Dr Amara Thornton tells us more about how Emily and her family past their leisure time, and about some of the company they kept. According to the diary of Emily Penrose, social life at the BSA often featured tennis parties in warm weather on the tennis court newly laid between the BSA and the American school. When the weather was inclement, however, the residents would play rounds of battle door, an early form of badminton, in the BSA library, now the main lecture room of the upper house. The BSA students, Ernest A. Gardner, and David G. Hogarth were often mentioned by Emily. Gardner, the more serious of the two, would discuss sculpture recently found near the Erechtheum on the Acropolis with her. Hogarth, when he was in residence between his numerous travels, would provide the company with colourful tales of his adventures, some of which would later be told in his autobiographical book, Wandering Scholars in the Levant. Tea with distinguished visitors, evening parties, amateur dramatics, and musical performances round out the social world. It is no wonder Emily describes various people, including herself, at times as feeling seedy, by which she no doubt meant hungover. Characters who feature in Emily's diary include noted early pioneers of Aegean prehistoric archaeology. Heinrich Schliemann was still a regular participant in Athens' intellectual life at this time. Emily describes a soiree at his Athens home, now the Numismatic Museum. The Penroses were also on friendly terms with Wilhelm Dortfeldt, congratulating him when he was elected as director of the German school in July 1887. They also toured Tirens with him in October of the same year. Emily remarked how Dortfeldt referred to the Great Tower as a mouse trap because once inside the gate, the enemy could be attacked on all sides. On the 24th of October, the gardeners, Ernest and his new wife Mary, had arrived in Athens just in time to hear Penrose's last lecture on the topic of the Propylia. The gardeners were invited back to the upper house for tea, Emily writing that they were charmed by Mary. In the midst of the Penrose's packing, on the 3rd of November 1887, the gardeners took possession of the linens and other household items to be left behind. The next day, the Penroses sailed from Piraeus to Bari, the first leg of their journey back to England. This is where Emily Penrose's diary, and indeed her adventures in Greece, ends. Emily would go on to have a prominent career in academia. In 1907, she became principal of Somerville College, Oxford, and played an active role in securing the right of women to be awarded university degrees. She retired in 1925 at the age of 67. In 1927, she was made a DBE, becoming Dame Emily Penrose.